Now this next video is something I was going to say is for the girls, but considering all of you boys are loving to grow your hair too, it's for all of you. So I'm going to be sharing with you how I have managed to grow the mop of hair that I have over the years and what's really, really working for me now. Now the first thing with this that I'm going to be really clear on is you want your hair to grow, you got to be willing to do the hard yards and there's going to be a lot of that self-love and acceptance that comes into this because there are going to be days where you cannot make your hair look perfect as a commitment to allowing it to be able to naturally start to grow. Now it just so happened that the reason why I ended up doing the hard yards myself was because I couldn't afford to go to the salon every month and get my hair dyed or go and get haircuts or buy all the expensive products for helping it to curl better or straighten better or defrizz and all that stuff and because I wasn't actually engaging in those practices I actually started to notice a much more positive difference in the quality of my hair and over time I've just expanded on those theories and ideas and practices and I'm going to be sharing a bit of that with you today. It's the first order of business. Say no to the hair tie. Hair ties are known to break our hair, keep it constrained, and it doesn't allow it to have that natural flow and movement that actually stimulates the hair growth. So you can do this once your hair is to about this length. Before then, try to keep it out, and I'll share some more ways with how you can manage that if it's unmanageable when it's out. But all I really do is take it with my hand, spin it around my index finger, grab the hair with my index finger, pull it through the hole, and you have a knot on the top of your head. You can do this low, you can do it high. Obviously it may not work if you're having to go for a run or go to the gym, that's when maybe you do need to take advantage of a hair tie. But other than that, huge, huge impact. Now you're gonna hate me for this next one, but no more straightening, no more curling, no more heat applicators, no more damaging heat on your hair. It is destroying your hair. And that is the reason why you have to keep doing it because your hair just can't do its thing. So allow your hair to do its thing. Embrace what your hair actually looks like and feels like and see what happens. And that doesn't mean that I never, ever, ever touch a straightener or do my hair. It will happen from time to time and I'll really enjoy that. But on a day-to-day -day basis, it saves me so much time and so much energy and just mental state that I can just have a shower, wash my hair and walk out the door and know that it's going to dry in a way that I like the look of without anything else needed. Next rule of thumb was that I stopped dyeing it. I had to stop because all of that bleach and all of that color was destroying my hair. And that might not be an option for everyone. I am lucky enough that the sun does tint my hair a much blonder blonde than it would normally be. But not dyeing it and not putting products in my hair that cannot be consumed. So that's a big rule for me now is that if it can't go in my mouth, it's not going on my body. And my body has thanked me for it and my hair grows oh so much faster. And so that brings us back to the point about the hard yards because when you stop dyeing it, you stop straightening it, you stop using chemical products, it's not gonna look that great once you jump out of the shower. It may be frizzy, it may be curly, it may be out of control, you may not be able to get it in a style that you like ever. And that's what I mean about it. So I personally, when I started this, my hair was here and it was obviously curly, so I couldn't really style it or anything in a way without those products or straighteners. Every day, if I got out of the shower, I would use a little bit of coconut oil 
and just scrunch it through the ends, maybe use a brush or comb through it and just kind of deal with it. That's where the hard yards comes in because all of this is leading up to actual natural hair development and growth, which you're going to love. And you don't have to commit to it full time. Maybe throughout the week, keep it with a headband and a little bit of oil in it. And on the weekend, you do it up nice. And at least that way it's giving your body and your hair a break so that it can really start to regenerate, to grow. And then last, but certainly not least, it probably should be first, but it just so happens that it was the last thing that I came across on this journey, is taking care of yourself from the inside out. So since I've become obsessed with this journey of taking care of my gut health, my hair grows at a rate that I can't even keep up with. And sometimes it even annoys me because my baby hair is growing so fast all the time that sometimes I feel like I'm a five-year-old kid at kindergarten when I tie my hair back. It's amazing. So do not discount the things that you eat and the things that you consume and how they're affecting your bodily functions, how your hair grow, how your nails grow, what your skin is like. That is honestly the biggest tip and key that I could give you in this whole conversation. So thanks for following along for another little segment. If you haven't already subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the little bell next to it so you get notified every time I upload a new video, which is happening every three days. And if you have any suggestions of things you want to hear me chat about or go into, let me know. Have a good one until next time, guys. Thank <laughs> you.